Hello, this is the LEGO Star Wars Rogue One Rebel U-Wing Fighter, which is also a troop transporter. And you probably haven't seen it in this particular form very frequently because this is not the default form that they usually show it on the package. And it's not the form that we've seen it in in the initial trailers and teasers for Rogue One. It actually ends up being a fairly large craft when you deploy the S-foils like this. And it's striking in its appearance, very striking because of how long the wings are and yet how thin they are. They're, they're very, very pointy and just has a, a certain sci-fi elegance to it and a lot of contrast as well against those large engines which are kind of looking like they're just pasted on, you know, they're just tacked on. Got the, uh, obviously a lot of X-Wing styling in this with the the type of engines used and also the canopy section. But then there's also this contrast with this ugly area down below, at least ugly in, in my personal opinion, with it's really just the troop transport bay, which just doesn't go with the rest of the elegance of the design. So very contrasty, and that's not Lego's fault or uh, you know they're doing, but I think that LEGO has done a very good job of capturing all of these elements. The doors for the troop areas can be opened up like this. And then there's a point defense cannon that you stick out the side. It's supposed to be looking like a, a Huey in that sense, where you just have a, a door gun and you can uh, sit a figure on either side to kind of pretend to operate that it has a stud shooter on it You can angle it up and down and forward and back, but it is difficult to get more figures in there You can get two right here. You can kind of stand some up inside there But for as large of a space as it is it's limited in access unfortunately they have a nice mechanism for opening up the canopy or at least getting it started because it's kind of buried down in there so it's not easy to get your fingernail under it to pull it up so they just added in just a little extra thing back here you push on this and it just cracks it open you know just a quarter of the way and then you can just go ahead and take it the rest of the way it's pretty straightforward standard kind of cockpit layout just uses a single uh, printed two by or one by two cheese slope piece your pilot goes here, isn't quite able to reach up to the console, and also there are no control sticks. But an interesting thing about this craft and how it works, actually it needs to lean back a little bit. It really would have been nice to get some control sticks along the side. It would have been easy to do though. But interesting thing about the way this works as a troop transport and having so much height to it, it actually has a second windscreen underneath. So here they've done that with the large UCS X-Wing style of, of window piece. And if you look through it, you can see the face of the pilot. So that's where he would be able to see down to survey the landing zone beneath. There is no action feature to fold the wings in, but I think that's fine. They do lock into place with a ball joint and a socket, one for the back, one for the front. So right now it's locked to the back. Just pull this forward, everything just slots in pretty nicely locks into place gives you a completely different look of the thing and this is probably what you're more used to seeing and what you would expect from this from what we've seen up to this point point. and uh, i think this looks pretty cool in and of itself very linear but then again with a lot of contrast with these big engine pods in the back that kind of make it look like a, a semi-realistic inspired thing or maybe a uh, a model rocket inspired thing because these just hang off the back and they're just big old go tubes. <laughs> I do think those look good for what they are and especially think they did a good job from the front on the inlets. The back of the entire craft has a little bit of greebling, oh, a fair amount of greebling actually. I'm not sure what this right here is supposed to represent. I think that may be where you pull up uh, a reactor to, to refuel it or it could represent a little, uh, little turret back there, but I don't think so. Uh, I'm not sure about that, but uh, this back here with a lot of grill detail is nice for kind of the, the uh, heat sinks, you know, radiator section. 
The craft is able to shoot in universe. The real, if you will, thing has two main laser cannons here. The Lego version has those for looks, but then to actually shoot, it uses the spring-loaded shooters, which are really, really deeply integrated in there, and they did a very nice job of hiding away the firing mechanism. So these are actually the firing buttons here with a nice build inside that just uses some slopes and inverted uh, tiles, round tiles, to to push against and kind of guide the tail of each one. Just push down on that, push down on that. They only stick up just a little bit, so it's even when these are loaded in there, just watch that tile right there. Just comes up just a little bit. See, so that's very nicely integrated. The inclusion of Jin Erso and Cassie and Ander is really critical here and uh, makes this a more valuable set because it has them in it, you know, two main characters. I think that the face that they did for Jin does not really capture the look of the, the character uh, as, you know, played in, in real life. Um, I think that Cassian is much better and much more appropriate in, in his appearance. The prince, uh, the quality of the prince though, is very good. Jin gets this launcher, which is a little build, uses the gunmetal gray colored uh, lightsaber blade, couple of black Baraki eyes. Her headgear shows a, a pretty prominent uh, you know, headset coming around one side and also has some of her hair showing around the back. Speaking of around the back and hair, the hairpiece does not cover up all of the secondary face for Cassian. That's, that's really unfortunate. I hate when that happens. There is his alternate face there, and I think that one also looks pretty appropriate. And I think that this alternate face for Jin looks more like the actress and more like the character there. I think that's that's a little bit better. Of course, with her kind of poncho throw taken off and also the, the satchel, uh, you can see now her torso print, which is also very, very good, has uh, nice level of detail, you know, some of the finer lines show some stitching in there and they also got some metallic elements in there. I think both of these have really good uh, body prints. And here left to right are Biston, I'm gonna call them. I don't know the proper pronunciation because I haven't heard it in universe as of yet, but uh, in the center is the Rebel U-Wing pilot. On the right is a generic Rebel trooper. Obviously, Biston has a brand new and exclusive head mold for that alien race and good printing. I like what they did with the facial hair and also the top of the head hair. Uh, there's, there's difference in the color, but I like how they teased out the ends, you know, all those little zigzag shapes in there. And also the fact that they left some hair off the top of the head so you can see some bald spots kind of showing through there. It's got alien pattern baldness going on there. And that ring around the base of his head, which I'm assuming would be used to seal up a, uh, you know, a helmet, uh, a, a pilot helmet to go with him, which is not included here, but that's done in gunmetal gray there. The U-wing pilot in the center uh, just kind of looks like a dark blue version of a of an X-Wing pilot, you know, very, very similar overall. And I think that's exactly what they were going for. Just that original trilogy, pretty standard style of, of flight suit. And they've reused the standard style of helmet with a really good print on it. The Rebel Trooper looks really cool. Nice color scheme there. Got a little bit of gap in it. There we go, that's more like it. But uh, yeah, I like the, the printing and the, the combination of the, the or, uh, olive colored, you know, fatigue and then the dark tan. I think those two go together pretty well. You do see a little bit of the alternate face for the Rebel U-Wing pilot. It's just visible from the back of the helmet. And there's what those look like with their helmets off. So no alternate face for your Rebel Trooper. To be honest, I'm not too much of a fan of the design of this craft in universe and the idea of a fighter slash troop transport just doesn't those two things don't go too well together to me. In terms of space battles, you'd have just such high G loads and you don't want to have a big load with you, uh, you know, when you're engaging in, in dogfights where, where you're basically using guns to shoot at each other. But that's neither here nor there. I think that LEGO did a very good job with this thing and I really like how the wings move. They are solid, everything fits together 
pretty well. It was an enjoyable build. It was a, a different build with multiple subsections, subassemblies that go together. I appreciate what they did for the canopy to help that to open up. I do wish that you could get figures into the troop compartment a little bit better, but it is limited in size. There's only so much you can do with that. If only the doors could move out of the way just a little bit further. Overall though, my impressions are pretty positive on this one. So that's it for my thoughts, and now it is your turn to share what you think about this set, what you think about how LEGO has translated it into model form, and if you have any thoughts on the design of the U-Wing in-universe as well. Thank you for watching. As always, I will talk to you again very soon.